My name's Robbie. And this is my narrowboat, the Naughty Lass. For almost a decade, I've been exploring our canals, recording my adventures as I go. <laughs> this is incredible. This time, I'm attempting a journey of around 300 miles through the north of England and the Midlands. From Sheffield, I'll make my way up country, joining the River Trent, and then on to the Chesterfield Canal. After Lincoln, I'll travel to Nottingham, and then onwards to Leicester, before I reach Braunston, the spiritual home for narrowboaters. All filmed during the quieter and colder months of autumn and winter. I've got my plan, but my plans don't always work out. I'm at the back end of this lock with my barge pole, trying to get these gates to close. <laughs> so jump on board for my canal boat diaries. This is officially the coldest start I've ever had to any of my journeys. Last night it was minus four degrees Celsius, and the boat is iced in. There's gonna be a lot of ice breaking to get out of this basin here in Loughborough in Leicestershire. Right, let's crank it. On this last leg, I begin in Loughborough in the East Midlands. I'll travel south to Leicester and then take a detour along Market Harborough's canal arm before I reach Braunston, Northamptonshire, journey's end. Oh man, this is a nightmare already. <laughs> Anyone with any common sense would probably be watching this thinking, why is he risking taking all the paint off the bottom of his boat getting through this ice? Because it does scrape at the sides. Well, I'm having it re-blacked soon this year anyway, so when I get to Braunston, that will be one of the first things that I try and sort out. I'd probably think twice if I had a nice brand new boat, wouldn't I? <laughs> By the 1770s, canal construction had reached Loughborough, and according to accounts, the town's waterway was one of England's most profitable canals. My last leg of the journey. From the north down to the Midlands, at a time when most boaters don't go out. They just stay nicely warm and cosy, hibernating inside. But this is magical. This time of year, especially when you feel like you're the only one out there cruising around, that's what it's all about for me. I've just left the Grand Union Leicester Line Loughborough section. I'm now on a river, I'm on the River Saw, the principal river for Leicestershire. And it's great just being on a new navigation that I've not explored at all. I've been along plenty of rivers and canals, but I've never been here. And that fills me with excitement. This is exactly what I love doing.
Well, you can see why they call it Barrow Deep Lock. It's going to be a bit of a climb to get out of here. I think this is a big mistake. Never been through ice this thick. You should never have to. Right, I'm, I'm going to get off. Get the barge pole out. Oh. Huge slabs of ice just being displaced. When I set off from Loughborough, I underestimated how much ice there was to go through. I knew there was a little bit around me in the basin, <laughs> but the temperature was so low that, yeah, there was much more than I thought. Two days, it's all I needed. The ice is still very thick in certain places, but at least it's all separated. And I'm just literally pushing it out of the way now. Great, back on the way. Close to the village of Mount Sorrel is one of Europe's largest granite quarries. During the 19th century, stone was carried by boat and barge. At this point on the River Saw, I could see how narrow it gets and how susceptible it would be to flooding. I just have to get off this river before it does start to rain, otherwise I will be in trouble. <laughs> Partly the reason I'm looking forward to get to Braunston is that I can start making some real life decisions. I don't know whether or not I want to be on this boat for many more years to come. Will I sell it? Or will I put all my time and effort into upgrading it? I want to get to Braunston and figure out my options. Discovered a leak on my water pipe. And obviously, in a boat, you want to keep the water outside and not have it inside. I'll just leave my finger there and that'll sort it. To fix this problem, I've had to empty the water tank and call in some help. But I am now at that point, the moment of truth, where I have to fill up the tank again and see if all the fittings hold. Well, I can't see any drips forming under any of the junctions next to the pipes or any of these new fittings. So, I think everything is going to be okay. I've visited a lot of cities in my time travelling the waterways. I've been to London, been to Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, York, Birmingham, but I've never been to Leicester, so it's very exciting. I've no expectations, no idea what I'm going to find there. 
that just makes it all the more appealing for me. Can't wait to get there. I've just pulled in because there's another boat coming and also the fire service seems to be testing out a hose. <laughs> I don't want to get that wet if I can help it. Hi there, what's going on here? Are you doing a training exercise or something? Yes, yeah, we're training. Um, so obviously we've got the main pump. And we've got different ways that we can get water from an instant. We can get it from hydrants, we can use rivers and canals and sometimes people's swimming pools. All right. <laughs> we need to, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, would you mind turning it off whilst I go past? Yes. Is that all right? <laughs> Thanks very much. Let's keep up the good work. Cheers. <laughs> just taken a walk to reach what's known as the Golden Mile in Leicester. So I could try out some Indian sweets. I've never had these before, but I've got a selection box in front of me full of all wonderful different types of delicacies. Wow, that's delicious. Leicester was a real surprise, but I found a lot to do. Just wandering around the city itself and seeing the landmarks. I saw the statue of Richard III, clock tower right in the middle. I could have easily have stayed longer than the two days that were written on the sign on the moorings. And I don't know where people are coming from when they said, don't moor in Leicester, keep going. I think boaters are missing out if they don't stop. Right, it's time to push on to the next leg of the journey. See you later, Leicester. <laughs> I'm making my way through the suburbs of Leicester and I don't think I realise how many locks there are on this stretch of the canal. There are so many that it really is certainly testing my physical endurance, but it's keeping me warm at least. are so hard to open. <sighs> Every now and then you've got to turn the mattress round, of course, but it's a little bit different for me on a narrowboat, isn't it? Not so much space. <laughs> I've grown up with not much money, had a wonderful childhood, but we didn't really have much. It was all like hand-me-downs. And maybe in my mindset, probably through the way my parents raised me, you know, you've got to take care of things, you've got to make do and mend, um, but it certainly made me aim for a lifestyle where, yeah, it's not all about money. 
the most beautiful sunrise in front of me here. I've also got a few locks and a tunnel before I take a trip down the Market Harbour arm of the Grand Union. But I've got a fair bit of travelling to do today. end of this lock with my barge pole trying to get these gates to close. <laughs> There's something down there I think but I can't see under the water that's the that's a problem. Also it's a problem if they can't shut because then all the water I'm letting into this lock to make it lift is just going out the other side. Have we done it? Have we done it? Yes! So we've got a proper seal on the gates. Well, now we can fill up the lock. Carry on with the journey. <laughs> Owing to errors during the build, Saddenton, completed in 1797, is a slightly crooked canal tunnel. Going through tunnels in winter, exactly like in summer really. <laughs> the temperature's usually quite the same. I'm lucky that we haven't had much rainfall recently. There's no drips landing on my head. From here at Foxton Locks, it's about 26 miles to Braunston. But before I tackle this famous flight, I'm taking a detour along Market Harborough's canal arm. Expensive looking houses around here. Hopefully that means I'm gonna get a nice posh mooring. But we'll see. <laughs> well this is one of the most beautiful wharfs I've ever seen. I mean they don't want my type hanging around, do they? It's alright, I'm gonna go and uh, moor up where it's uh, <laughs> a little more rough and ready. That's fine, I don't mind. While in Market Harborough, I want to visit the former site of boat builder Sam Springer. His yard, now demolished, once accounted for almost 50% of new narrowboats. And I found some film from its heyday. Oh, this is fantastic old footage here. I know friends who've had Springer boats and even my producer used to have one. They were so popular and then just made it more affordable for people to get into. And the name, Tatterdemalion of Market Harborough. Brilliant. Last night I made the journey from Market Harbour to reach this location, Foxton Locks. And this junction is normally one of the busiest spots on the network. And right now, icy and cold, but I've got it all to myself. I've just got to wait for a lock keeper to actually open up the lock and let me through. In some respects, 
I have saved the best till last here because I've certainly seen some sites that I've never really seen before. And a part of the country, Leicestershire, which I wouldn't have even thought of visiting, has now opened my eyes to a whole landscape that I've been missing out on. It's just incredible. seeing this little robin appear at the side of the lock gates. Apparently his name is Eric. Foxton Lock's resident robin. I think he's a bit of an exhibitionist myself. He obviously wants to be on camera. That's it, Foxton top lock. Foxton flight done. Thanks so much, cheers. <laughs> now it's on with my journey. I'd left all this ice behind, but it has been very cold. Minus four last night. Didn't take much for the whole of this canal to be covered in a thin sheet of ice, but that's the crucial part. It is thin. Just hoping it doesn't get thicker as I get nearer my mooring spot. It's definitely in the shade. Oh, it is cold. One of the main challenges living on board my boat in winter is actually cleaning. I'm not the biggest fan of cleaning to start off with, but things like muddy towpaths, <coughs> the coal wood fire, there's a lot of dust that gets generated every time I open the door and there's ash coming out, dust everywhere. I have to keep cleaning, dusting, but yeah. That's the price you pay to uh, keep the boat warm anyway. I've made some questionable fashion decisions today. I've just grabbed whatever I think will keep me warm and no one else is around, so they're not going to see me, are they? So I've got two hats, two shirts, two jumpers on. At least I'm warm. <laughs> the Grand Union connects London and the Midlands with one branch ending in Birmingham and the other running through Leicester. It was never built as a single entity, but the result of the mergers between several different canal companies. It feels quite strange getting to the end of a journey like this because I've had so many good memories from what's happened and all of a sudden you realise you've only got a couple of days left until it's all over. But I do need time to stop, think about what's next in terms of what I do with this boat. Because I really don't know at this moment in time. What for gap services? Now, if you're a motorist visiting, look around you. You might see a boater within your midst, because I could just more here, pop in and get a, I don't know, a pasty. But the most exciting thing for me about this location is that back in the 60s, bands like the Beatles, Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd, 
Even Jimi Hendrix stopped here to have a meal after they performed at their gigs. I think that's pretty cool. Beautiful morning again. Got some amazing weather, but I am a little bit sad because this is my last day on this journey. I'm all I'm excited to reach the end. My destination of Braunston at the same time. I don't want this adventure to end. Norton Junction is where the Leicester line of the Grand Union meets the main line linking London and Birmingham. Now, this is a two-way tunnel. Well, I've got to pass another boat already. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right, I mean, this hasn't happened for a long time for me. I've not been in a tunnel like this. It's always quite spooky because you're both passing each other in the, in the darkness, you're concentrating on not crashing into the sides or, or the other boat. Just the other side of Broadston Tunnel, I can see my first lock. I've got six wide locks to take up, and I could do with a bit of warming up, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm glad of some lock action. Broadston is such an important place in terms of narrowboat history. The working boat families. They worked, they lived, they died here, and even their descendants still reside in the village. Being the spiritual home of narrowboaters, I also feel like it's a little bit like it's my home as well. So, well, <laughs> anywhere I take my boat, it's my home, isn't it? <laughs> I've had so many challenges on this journey. Flood water, engine problems, being iced in on the canal. And this is the final one, taking this incredibly sharp turning. But here I am, finally, in Braunston Marina, the epicentre of all things narrowboating. And I can moor up in their maintenance area, <laughs> because I've got a lot of work to do now the journey's over. But here we are in Braunston. I couldn't think of a better way to end this.